Hi, I'm Paul, producer and mixer at Full Fat Music, and today I'm going to give a brief overview of some of the new features in Logic Pro 11, including uh, the new session players, stem splitting, the new saturation plugin, as well as a few other features. So first off, I'll just go through the new session players. So um, we previously had just the drummer um, there, but now we've got the bass player and the keyboard player as well. So I'll just quickly show you um, some of these. Okay. And the idea is it's meant to be, as the name suggests, like a session player. They'll kind of riff along with your track and you can give them guidance with these options down here so we've got complexity which is how complex how many notes they're added in there versus something that's quite simple um, and then intensity so how hard or soft they're playing Oops. versus something quite soft and intimate like that We've got different presets here for different rhythmic patterns, where the left hand and right hand are playing. Then you can change the voicing of the left hand and the right hand, change the style. And we've got some options for fill amount and fill complexity and swing as well. If you go to details, you can add more or less grace notes. You can change the, the feel of the timing of the playing, the dynamics and uh, humanization as well. So it'd be less sort of quantized as you move that up and then manual you can create your own timing pattern so lots of options there maybe not hugely useful in a lot of dance music but i can imagine some scenarios that you might want to experiment with that for example it could be great in a, a houseier track or funky house or something like that and good too if you wanted to create your own samples create something that had a bit of a soul vibe and then resample that and use it in a track it's a good time to point out this new global chord track feature as well. So if you press this little down arrow here, or press G on your keyboard, you get these options for the arrangement track, the marker track, which is, we've always had these options, but now there's a, a chord track as well. So you can see there's one chord being added in there, and that'll determine what the um, piano session player and the bass session player will play along to. So I'll just quickly show you. So if I add a second chord in there, click the plus button and it'll enter the new chord section depending on your um, playhead cursor. And then you can select different chord types and these options here. I think you can type it in as well. And if you come down here, you can select MIDI input and then play it in on the keyboard as well. So you can see here, now that the chords have changed along with the the chords that i've just entered into the global chord track quickly show you the bass play it's a similar sort of thing though got a lot of similar options there you can add um octaves into the playing to make something a bit more complex use disco slap let's see what that's like cool so i'll just quickly add in a drummer and then you've got a full band in there, albeit sometimes quite generic. Great, so as I said before, it could potentially be quite useful if you wanted to create your own samples or something like that 
Um, so I'll just show you what I mean quickly. So if we bounce those in place. So it's created an audio file out of those individual uh, parts there. So. so we can try changing the very speed. Just to bring it closer to a dance tempo. And if we create software instrument track, add a quick sampler, drag the sample into the sampler, change it to slice. Then you should be able to play some of the parts back on a keyboard. Find some interesting bit and add some MIDI notes in, which I'll do now. Cool, I've literally spent a couple of minutes there just picking some of the slices that sounded interesting and added some MIDI notes in, so it sounds like this. So if we just add a new session player in, but this time choose uh, the session player and I'll choose this modern house. Uh, that's under the electronic drummer this time. Cool, so it's a really basic idea there, but I'm sure if you spend um, a little bit of time experimenting, you could do something quite cool. So the new stem splitting feature then is great. The technology has been around for a little while now. There's lots of different software companies and services you can use to split stems. Um, but now Logic have included it inside the door, which is just really useful. Often it's a case of you've got some audio or loop or something inside your project and then you've got to export it, um, separate the stems in some other piece of software and then bring them back in. So just to have that within Logic is great. So I'm just going to show you using the loop that we created earlier. That way we can compare what the original files and the stem splitter files sound like next to each other. So this is the audio file of these three parts here. So we've got the piano, the bass and the drums together. So if I right click on the audio part we created, we've got the option for stem splitter. It's near the top there because I've used it recently but normally it would be under processing and stem splitter so we've got the option of vocals drums bass and other we don't have any vocals in this one so i'll deselect that one and click split <clears throat> and then it puts those files into a summing bus for us which is handy so if i just make sure that's muted this is the sample then <clears throat> built back up from the um, stems that have been uh, separated. Sounds good so far, so let's listen to the drums on the run. And the bass. And then the, the piano or other, so there'll be some other elements in there. Although I don't know what other elements there should be, but... You can hear some of the transients still from the drums, I think. But it's pretty good otherwise. If I just compare that, the, let's say, the bass to the original bass. It's obviously a lot cleaner, but it's not done a bad job at all. You lose some of the transients, but it's definitely usable if you were doing a remix or something like that. I've got like a million saturation plugins already, but it does sound really nice from what I've heard so far. And um, it's great to have stock plugins like this that are really usable. Um, so let's just have a listen to a few of the different models. So we've got Retro Tube. I'll turn it up quite high just for evaluation purposes. But
we've got this bypass button as well so you can only so you can choose to only apply it to higher frequencies so the the kick drum for example isn't um pushing into the distortion uh, as much but i'll take that off for a second that's retro tube modern tube Magnetic, which is meant to be a uh, tape style saturation. Squeeze, which sounds like you're pushing a compressor hard, I think. And analog preamp, which should be a bit more subtle, which it is. As with most of these plugins, you probably get the best results having uh, much more subtle amount on lots of tracks at once maybe even every track you could use something like the preamp on every track um, and it'd be interesting to see what it's like building a mix through it rather than sort of just plonking it on afterwards or putting it strapping it across the master bus but adding it onto most tracks and layering it as you're building a mix would be um, the approach I'd probably take with that so we've got the bypass button there also got this low and high cut filters with pre and post options. Just want to quickly see how it is with CPU as well. So let's have a look where it sits with just the one track. Okay. If I quickly duplicate this several times and see where it sits then. I'll just mute my master bus because we don't want to hear that. Hmm. It does actually seem to take up quite a lot of CPU there. That's the only thing I've got running on each of the tracks. Um, so maybe you can put it on every track after all. I'd have to look into my settings and see if it's something to do with my computer but I've got a, a Mac M2 studio so I'd expect it to be a bit better than that to be honest but next up then I'll go through some of the other features that have been added so one of the new improved features in Logic 11 is the MIDI routing so just to demonstrate I've quickly set up a, um, a synth track here just with a simple chord on it and I've put an arpeggiator on so it sounds like this <clears throat> then I've created a second track with a, a bass instrument in it and if we look at these options on the left we now have the option to change the internal MIDI in so if I click that it says instrument input and I've got the option to take the MIDI input from this top track here I'm just going to add this transposer on here as well so it'll um, pitch it down a couple of octaves so the MIDI is coming out from this track into this track and then being pitched down two octaves with the transposer and playing it back through this synthesizer um, sounds like this which is really cool to be able to just add the MIDI to one channel um, and then route it through several other channels so you can layer things really easy and if I want to record the arpeggiated pattern, I can do that now. So you can see it recording it in there. So that's MIDI routing. Next up, I'm just going to quickly show the real-time bounce for external instruments feature that they've added as well. So this is a great feature if you've got any external hardware instruments or external effects. Previously, if you routed MIDI from your computer to an external instrument and you wanted to bounce that as audio, it was a little bit more complicated than it would be with a software instrument where you can just bounce it in place and turn it into audio. Um, but now we've got this feature where we can bounce in place even when you're using an external hardware synthesizer. So this at the moment, sending MIDI from Logic into the Sub 37, sounds like 
this. So now I can click bounce in place. And you can see it's turned that into audio automatically for us. So that's loads easier. Really useful if you're using any hardware. Great, so that's just about everything for this quick overview of the new Logic 11 features. I've been Paul Aspin for Sonic Academy. Thanks for watching.